Ace, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, just brief introductions before we kick off. Uh, I'm Naveen Tuli, a managing partner for EMEA and APAC MLA's in-house group, um, based in Delhi at the moment, and joined by my colleague Tanya Albers, who's a partner in the firm and uh, in our EMEA in-house group, sitting in our Amsterdam office. And we're delighted to have Case Van Oppen, um, the Executive Vice President and Group General Counsel of Fresenius Medical Care, join us from your home just outside Zurich. So thank well, you very much, Case, for making the time. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. That's great to see you again. And, and I guess just for the purposes of those who may not be familiar with Fresenius, um, Fresenius, obviously, are a, uh, a very large uh, global multinational and a leader in the provision of products and services for people with chronic uh, kidney failure. Um, but a sizable business with over 120,000 people, 17 plus billion euros in revenue. Um, and we'd obviously like to hear more about the legal function and how things have been during the pandemic. On the legal team, uh, specifically, you know, we have a group of almost 250 people working in the legal teams, uh, in the legal team that's, you know, of course, legal professionals, lawyers, but also paralegals and, and other support people or other uh, functional specialists. They don't, they're not all lawyers. Um, and yeah, since uh, the pandemic, uh, since March 12 last year, when I had my last business trip, uh, we of course have been working virtually. How did the team uh, adapt to home working when, when everyone was sent, sent out the office? I think I was kind of surprised that people actually were as flexible as they were. I think it was almost, uh, uh, you know, seamless how people moved into a home office situation, you know, not only on the legal side, but the whole company, uh, uh, at least for those that work in the offices. Of course, we have a lot of people that are actually nurses or doctors or work in the manufacturing sites. So for them, the situation is uh, way more difficult uh, because they had to go still go into their their working environments and you know put on protective gear and, and all those uh, complex uh, things that we had to do protect to protect themselves and the patients and and, and co-workers in in the manufacturing sites and in the clinics but for the office personnel i think it was you know it was really seamless and and it, 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 it worked very well of course we missed to go to to the office and see our colleagues uh, some areas in the world asia pack things have been uh, Becoming a little bit more relaxed, so the opportunity to meet up uh, in the office if it adds value, um, you go to the office. If it's you know if it doesn't, you can work from home. Uh, that kind of balance that we hope to achieve also for the rest of the world uh, in, in some kind of new normal that hopefully sometime in the summer uh, will will come about. How have you how have you managed to sort of maintain morale and that team spirit you know it, it, i think in the first two three months everyone pulled together there may be excessive team calls and zoom calls between team members um, and then people got a lot of fatigue from these sorts of calls but so a year on how have you managed to maintain it yeah i think there, you know surprisingly the, or maybe i shouldn't say surprisingly but you know i must say i'm impressed with the self-motivation of people and the self-discipline of 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 of, of the employees um, there was really, uh, you know, a lot of uh, self-initiative um, virtually. So I, I was really impressed with that. Um, from you know, from a leadership perspective, of course, you try to over-communicate. You, you know, I think it's very important. You also do as much as you can by video. Not always, um, not always possible, but uh, also depending on on the quality of the Wi-Fi. Um, you know, I think over communication is important. What I also did, uh, since normally I would be traveling around the world, I would meet up and have coffees or lunch with with uh, with colleagues in the legal team. I decided to have virtual coffee meetings with each every uh, each and every member of of, of the legal team, um, and you know, see how they're going and and how how the pandemic has affected them and the restrictions. Um, but yeah, technology makes it all possible. So. Uh, uh, 30 years ago, this would have been a very different situation. Case, and what did you do yourself to keep up the spirit for this year, let's say the past year? It's not just the colleagues, it's also yourself, isn't it? True, and I think, you know, the restrictions coming out of the pandemic, you know, bear on all of us. Um, of course, for those that have been affected by the pandemic directly or indirectly health-wise, of course, it's, it's way worse, and I think that that is the perspective I try to take, you know, uh, I'm in a relatively uh, fortunate position and um, that it's possible to work uh, from the home office and also 
Um, I must say the company has kept me so busy uh, that in, in terms of self-motivation, uh, it wasn't too difficult either. But yeah, it's, uh, by now, of course, it does take a long time. And it's indeed 12 months in almost. So um, you know, I think we're all longing for going back to some new normal. Maybe we come back to the pandemic once more during this conversation. But let's go back to you. And we know you well. Naveen and I know you quite well for many for a number of years now but it would be great to hear from you your journey so what happened to get you where you are today could you briefly tell us that your background yeah i'm glad you used the word briefly because uh, <laughs> <laughs> given that i started last century uh it could have been a long story too um anyway i you know i i worked for international law firms on both sides of the Atlantic, both in the US and, and in Europe, um, decided fairly on in my law firm career that I prefer to work in-house and be more preventive, act, uh, active in a preventive way. Um, so I, I actually joined a, a public telecoms operator that then started to form an international joint venture with other uh, public telecoms operating operators, which was fascinating. And then out of that came in a and start up with an IPO, which was really a great experience to do, where we went uh, public both in Frankfurt and also at NASDAQ. Um, and then um, we moved um, to London, um, where I, I did a chapter 11 of a public telecoms operator, um, which you know, probably was the most intense experience I had professionally. Um, and you know, we came out of that successful, uh, successful way, um, and, and took it public again, and then sold it off to an Indian company. Um, and then I decided, uh, getting a little bit older, mid-career, um, that maybe it's better to work in healthcare. Um, it didn't exactly go <laughs> like that, but once the opportunity came about. Okay, so looking back at all these years, what was the best career advice you received? Um, I think it was probably from a partner at the law firm when I expressed that I wanted to go in the house. He said, "That's a, I can see that fit, but make sure to check your reporting line. Um, I, and I always did that. You know, he said, look, if, if you're reporting, for example, into finance, that probably don't take legal debt that serious. Um, that, that's, that's, uh, that, that was an aspect that I should look at. Or if you report only into... You know, if you have a local role, you're reporting to local management, you're probably going to be in having issues when it comes to really doing the right things for the global company on the, on the, on the, on the, on the long term as you have your uh, your allegiance to the local uh, short term interest. So I think reporting line is really something I look at very closely. And who had the biggest influence on you professionally? I. I'm not a person, I have you know, many people that inspired me, but I'm not a person that necessarily, you know, uh, believe in, you know, big leaders or, or, or heroics. Um, so I, I think the biggest impact professionally that I had was really um, maybe two things. One was to, to, to study abroad. Uh, I think that at the time I did that, which was in the 80s, 1980s, my gosh. Uh, it's still, um, you know, more an exception now. Luckily, uh, it's much more common also because of the Erasmus program, at least here in Europe. Um, but when I did it, it was still uh, very much an exception. And that really, you know, to study somewhere else in a complete different environment uh, and work and live there, I think, you know, really shaped me professionally. And, and I can, in that sense, advise uh, anybody who has that opportunity to take it. Um, I think the other one was really already alluded to the whole chapter 11 process, which was such an intense process where, you know, normally speaking, uh, when you do an IPO or you do, you know, um, constructive things or people, uh, then you know, everybody is, is usually very, quite cooperative or wants to get things done. The problem with the chapter 11 is everybody goes against you. So, you know, suppliers, um, uh, the, the governments, um, customers, you know, name it. So. That was really a whirlwind where also the legal function was at the middle of it, uh, together with finance, and uh, that also shaped me professionally. Also from a, you know, um, learning that you know you have to understand the, under the fundamental business drivers uh, to really get out of that, and also look at the underlying numbers to really be successful as a company and how to get there. Um, so that's that's that really shaped me professionally. Yeah. 
So you, you now have, let's say, the legal top job within Fresenius. Um, you, you've come from, let's say, 20, 30 years ago. How have you developed yourself, let's say? Uh, where did you think you, or where do you think you had to constantly work on to get yourself to where you are now? Um. I didn't expect that question, but that's fine. Uh, it has been <laughs> it has been more than thirty years, by the way. Okay, <laughs> I, I didn't want to correct that either. Then oh, that's okay. Um, I, yeah, I think I think I have, without trying to be arrogant, I do think I have a natural fit to work in house. I really like that environment because it gives you that that you know, direct contact with the business and understanding the value chain and all that kind of things uh away from legal specialism which i think the law firms by necessity uh, moved into more and more so i like the generalist role um and i think um you know that that is really something that 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 fits um i think you know learning to really in order to do that successfully, you really have to look at all aspects, you know, trying to understand the financial side, trying to understand the technological side, which for lawyers is not easy to do. Um, you know, really understanding all aspects of the business and the various perspectives of the various stakeholders, um, I think is something that that was really necessary to learn to become a good, successful global general counsel. Um, so. Uh, that's something that I learned over the years, and I had the privilege to be in opportunities to to do that with you know working in diverse industries, first in telecoms, then in in healthcare, but also various um, um, parts of of those industries. Plus, quite an extreme uh, situation when it came to especially the telecoms with incredible fast paced um, and, and almost like a gold rush type situation with the IPOs uh, in the early 2000s um, and then the opposite happening with all the uh, implosion that happened with many telecoms companies uh, coming also in, in the early 2000s shortly thereafter. So I think these more extreme forms um, you know, shape you professionally and I think it also gives you good learning as in-house counsel because you've seen so many Different ways of and situations for 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 business situations, and especially for a public company, you know, having seen relatively uh, extreme happenings like a bankruptcy, um, you know, I think that that helps you to to uh, make the right decisions and and, and, and be part of the right uh, going the right direction. Can we ask you one more question about the pandemic, please? Um, and, and that's just about you. What you, are you really fed up with after 12 months? Uh, <laughs> again, I don't think, you know, I think, of course, the restrictions in general, but again, I think we're still relatively well off. Um, it would be nice to have a choice again um, and, and, and to where to go and when you want to go. So uh, I think that 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 is the aspect of that I think uh, just the idea of not being able to you know, to go where you want to go, whether that's a restaurant or a trip abroad or or whatever. I think that that is probably the biggest issue. But again, we did not have the severe lockdowns as you've seen in some countries where you really have to stay at home. Okay, so whenever this is finished, what would be the first thing you would be doing? Yeah, probably you know. Uh, Weather depending, but probably have a beer or a good wine on the, on the terrace. Um, so um, things like that, or go to a football game, or um, you know um, that kind of things. Yeah. Okay, and then let me finish off with. You, you what know we... my affinity for football. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll join you, please. <laughs> um, the fun question. It's it's our last question, and. Um, is there anything that you can share with us that we would be surprised to learn about you? Um, maybe that actually I had hair once. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but more seriously, uh, people may not know that I'm actually a licensed sports instructor. Um, so maybe that's a more like serious answer. Before law school. Yes. 
Yes. Okay. Yes. And did you and teach? I, and I actually financed law school by working as a, as a sports instructor, yeah, especially in the summers. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, football. That's a good one. No, more general, but also also been football coach of a youth team and that kind of things, yeah. But that was not, pro that didn't bring in any money. That was more than a, Voluntarily, but uh, no things like like you know uh, camps for, for 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 younger children and, and being the uh, you know organizing that and, and leading yeah. that and keeping kids busy, uh, especially those that couldn't go on holiday. Um, so yeah. So if you would not be a general counsel, would you have been a sports instructor? You think or uh, no? I always no? wanted to be a, a diplomat. Actually, um, given my very outspoken views, I probably would be uh, totally <laughs> suitable for it. But that was certainly my <laughs> my 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 youth and and um, uh, my dream to become uh, a diplomat. But um, uh, probably was because of the international aspect and, and the global aspect of it, and of course. Working for a multinational like Mercedes Medicare, I feel I've, I've achieved it anyway, and I can still be quite undiplomatic. Yeah, so that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Case. I have no further questions. You, Nafi? No, thank you very much, Case. It's been uh, it's been our pleasure to catch up with you, and we look forward to the day when we can meet up again in Switzerland over a glass of wine on the terrace. That would be great. Wait. Yeah, absolutely. Or, <laughs> or we go to Amsterdam and visit my favorite football team uh, in a full stadium. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, all the best to you. Uh, stay healthy, and um, I look forward to uh, catch up in person, indeed, very soon, because that will mean we're out of this. Indeed. Yes. You take care. Take care, Keith. Thank, Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.